I've got myself ready to start gluing up the top here. And what I haven't shown you is the arduous process of dressing all of the timber. But basically I've got a whole bunch, 18 sticks of uh, 70 by 35. That came out of something larger, but you can really build this out of any timber. Uh, we're using some really nice red gum. It's gonna look beautiful and it's really nice and hard. Any kiln dried timber will be appropriate. You'd have a tough time getting structural pine to stay nice and flat, I'd say. But by all means, go ahead and give it a shot. The key to doing a glue up like this, where we have a ton of surface area and a ton of boards, we actually have 18 sticks, so that's you know 17 individual glue surfaces, is you need to have everything prepped up first. And you're probably gonna want someone to help you. It's not 100% necessary, but it's gonna certainly make the process go a lot faster. And you need it to go quickly because these have such large glue surface areas that if you start gluing and get them sitting next to each other, before you've clamped them up, and while you're trying to get glue on all of the other surfaces, some of those first couple of boards can have glued themselves together. So get everything ready first. Some things that I like to do. Prep the clamps. I've got them all set to the correct length. I've taped some packers on the end so that the steel isn't gonna uh, dig into the timber, just in case I end up using that face. I've put some tape on the bottom so that the glue doesn't react with the metal and give you that really dark blackening oxide that you get when glue reacts with steel. I've also put a tiny bit of tape on the pin of this sash clamp so that the pins don't turn out when I'm rolling these all around getting them ready because that happens all the time. If you're not using sash clamps, do whatever you've got to do, but get your clamps ready. It really helps me. We're not biscuiting this uh, primarily because there's just so many individual joins that getting those biscuits in as well as getting the glue on is going to be too time consuming and it's going to be one more hurdle, one more step that could potentially slow the process down. What I'm doing instead is I'm gonna use uh, what I call calls. Basically they're timber that is thickenest. In this case, it's offcuts of this stuff that I'm using. So it's dead straight. I use one top and bottom and I clamp them. And I'll do a set of them at the end and probably a set right in the center as well. So you'll need some of them and some clamps for them. What that does is as you're applying clamping pressure from each side, if you're getting any bowing, the calls squish it back down into flat. And so it's nice to use timber like this on edge so you, you have that force of a uh, on edge piece of lumber. Make sure that you, when you're putting those coals down onto the, the timber, um, use some plastic or some paper to separate them. Otherwise they're gonna glue on there forever and you will not get them off without breaking the timber. I'm gonna apply the glue with a roller, not a spreader because it's gonna be faster. And I'm gonna be using so much glue that I've got the whole pump pack here so that I can quickly refill this when I need to. I put paper down on all of my surfaces because there is gonna be a bunch of glue uh, squeezed out and I don't wanna destroy these um, armor tool rolly benches with glue, which would then have to be cleaned off. The paper will stick to our timber and we're just gonna to have to sand that off. I prefer to use paper than plastic, however, because the paper allows the glue to actually set, whereas if it's laying on plastic, you can get reservoirs of glue in there um, that don't set, and it means that you have to wait longer to be able to sand it. That's basically it. I've got a mallet here to whack things into position if they need to. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get started. Now, in terms of width, this glue up is gonna result in a workbench top a little bit wider than 600. The reason I've chosen that uh, is a, it's a slight variation on what I initially started with, is I actually want the top work surface to line up perfectly with the outside edges of the legs so that I can use the entire side of the table as a workable surface. For instance, if I'm trying to plane the edge of a door, I can slide that door vertically up against the workbench and it can be held in place along that whole vertical surface. So that's something that I've come across in some research for this style of workbench, and I'm gonna work with that uh, from here on out. Let's get stuck into the fun part.
So the fun part is done. Um, this thing is all glued up. We've got good even squeeze out across the whole length. Used a number of um, sash clamps and some parallel clamps. These calls are really important. You'll definitely want to use something like that just to get all those boards lined up because we're not using dominoes or biscuits. Um, I'll leave this till tomorrow, come take all the clamps off and then I'm actually going to pass it through my thicknesser but I'll show you a couple of ways to get it flat if you don't have a, um, a big wide thicknesser also. Here I am with my very large heavy uh, solid red gum workbench top and I have smoothed it off and thicknessed it. Now, if you are lucky enough or you know someone who has a 600 wide thicknesser or a thicknesser that's wide enough for your particular workbench, that is a wonderful way to get it nice and smooth. But a lot of you won't, so I'll go through some ways to get it flat, essentially. So last time you saw me with this, it was covered in clamps. Uh, I removed the clamps. I then got as much glue muck that had dried off. So that included a bunch of paper that had stuck to it. Um, yeah, just piles of glue everywhere. I got all that off just with a hand plane. Um, it does blunten them, but it's very effective. And I got it as flat as I possibly could using the hand plane. So that meant taking any high spots of glue off, um, any places where the paper had accumulated, that sort of thing. If you only had a hand plane, it is possible to make one of these fairly flat. You'd want a fairly long plane, so number five or above. Um, this is a six, we've got a Lubin seven here. Something like that would be possible. Uh, it's a somewhat tricky and time consuming way to do it, but you know, by all means, if you're up for the challenge, you will also need some sort of straight edge. Now, it doesn't have to be a giant engineer's rule, but something that you know is flat and straight is necessary so that you can constantly reference and find your high spots. The basic technique is you lay your ruler, your straight edge across the bench, um, you mark where it's touching, just with a crayon or some chalk. You do it uh, long ways, diagonally in both directions, and up and down the table. And then you work with your plane to lower those high spots. The advantage of having a longer, a plane with a longer sole means that you can get a flatter surface. So that is one way. I did basically a quick version of that and then I passed this whole thing through my thicknesser. If you have a smaller thicknesser, another option is to actually glue this top up in two sections or three sections if you wanted to, which means you're then re-gluing after you've thicknessed the piece that you are able to, say 300 wide. Um, to do that and get those two pieces to then be flat when you glue them together, you're gonna to have to make sure that the edges are perfectly square, which means having a jointer that's well set up also. If you wanna do this glue up all in one shot, the most common way without a large thicknesser or a large belt sander to um, flatten one of these tops is to use a handheld belt sander or potentially a random orbital sander. The procedure is very similar to what I was describing with the plane. You're gonna need a straight edge. So you're gonna find those high spots, gently flatten them down. You just wanna be checking constantly to make sure that you're not creating any hollows that you're then gonna to have to chase. Once the whole thing is flat, you flip it over and do the same thing. And, you know, ideally all of your timber is thickness to begin with. Your joints were relatively flat because you've used really nice big calls. I found that there wasn't a lot of material that I had to remove. Um, before I got my giant thickness up, I would have just done this with a sander. From that point, I squared off the ends. So now I know exactly how long this is and exactly how wide it is, and it's all a consistent thickness throughout the entire bench. So this is kind of ready to be put aside for the time being until I have to start thinking about mounting uh, vices and so forth. But what I needed from this was I needed to know its precise dimensions so that I can build my base to fit that accordingly. So until I have to mess with this, this can go elsewhere and we'll move on to messing around with the frame and the legs. <laughs> 